Greetings, everybody. Welcome to an, uh, another Zoom meeting where we discuss the practice of charity, morality, and meditation as taught by the Buddha. Everyone is welcome to join us. If you have any questions, you can come in the room. If not, you can just watch on Facebook Live or YouTube Live. Our first member is Felicia Chan. Good evening, Bajan. My meditation progress is good. Uh, I don't have questions for tonight. Thank you for your Dharma teaching. Sadu, sadu. Okay, next, Yong Bei. Yong Bei from New York. Good evening, Brajan. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, today I have my question today. Uh, I keep my 5%, right? I need a advice for more. I can do much better. What do you mean better? Can you keep it every day? Yes, I do. Uh, only 60% of, uh, 60% for my uh, five uh, precepts. Because I want to do much better. Uh, I need your advice and how I can do much better. Well, better is to keep every day, all the time. Can you keep every day the five precepts? Yes, I do, yeah. 60%. <laughs> Okay, try to make it about a percent. Okay, thank you, Prasa. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay. And on your day off, day where you don't have to go to work or engage with people, maybe you should try to keep the eight precept and practice meditation as, as okay. well. Thank if you. If you want to advance in your practice, you can practice at home, you don't have to go to a monastery, you know. Just keep the entry set and then practice mindfulness from the time you get up to the time you go to sleep. And alternating with sitting or sitting meditation or walking meditation. Then you will advance in your practice. If not, you will stay the same. You won't go, go anywhere more than but you have to push yourself if you want to advance, you want to go move forward. There's still a lot that you need to do to get rid of all the stress and anxiety and worries from your mind. Okay? Okay, thank you. Yeah, I promise. Yeah, I can do it. Yeah, thank okay. you. Thank you. No need to promise me. You have to promise yourself. <laughs> Okay, thank and you. I give you a promise. You don't, you, you're not doing me a favor by promising me. You know? Okay, <laughs> thank, thank you, Radha. Thank you. You're doing yourself a favor if you promised yourself. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Next, Billy from Indonesia. Good evening, Tanajan. Uh, today I don't have any questions. Thank you. And I've had from Uman Rajatani, Northeastern Thailand. Uh, I don't have any question tonight. Okay, Koksen from Singapore. Yeah, uh, Prajan, I don't have any questions tonight. Thank you. Okay, Martha Christie from Arizona, I believe. Somehow your camera isn't in focus, but it's okay. You can go ahead and speak. Oh, you. okay. Can you hear me? Can yes, you? perfectly. Hi. Um, Dalajan, uh, I, Joseph and I wanted to thank you for the Dhamma that you've been teaching us over the months because these have been really, really some of the hardest times we've been through in our entire lives. And uh, our son uh, did survive uh, the illness that he went through, but he came, you know, very, very, very close to death. And um, he's still recovering after several months. And then um, Joseph uh, contracted a very serious illness, and the doctor said that he was going to die. 
So um, if it hadn't been for the, for the Dhamma, honestly, I, it, for myself, I was facing basically being in the world alone. Uh, as far as, uh, you know, most of my family has passed away um, and my son and husband are really the only family I have left. So I was facing being completely alone in the world as far as you know, my past and uh, what you know was, was the reality that I uh, thought seemed so real and so solid. And uh, with the Dhamma, um, I was able to pass through that situation that went on for several months um, with no hysteria, no crying, um, no despair. Um, and I was, I was amazed, frankly, that um, the Dhamma keeps you in a place where you just don't react in the way that you ordinarily do. And um, or that a lot of people do faced with the death basically of your entire family. And um, I just want to thank you uh, so much because you, your instructions uh, for meditation have been so precise that they've allowed uh, me to uh, focus the mind in a way that I hadn't uh, been doing before. And um, I just want to thank you for that so much. And um, so, you know, I guess as far as questions go, um, you know, my only question is, uh, you know, I have by staying, uh, you know, with the Dhamma and in meditation, um, I, I guess that's the only uh, thing that um, kept me steady. Is there anything else that um, would be helpful? Well, the Dhamma is your true refuge. So that's you right. Have to you have to stick with the Dhamma, the Noble Eight Four Path. <clears throat> this will lead you out of samsara, out of all types of anxiety and sadness or suffering. <clears throat> so keep yeah. practicing the Eight Four Path, especially mindfulness and wisdom. Yes, yes, um, yes. That's that's uh, so true. You know, it was interesting because the Dhamma, frankly. Uh, that was my only refuge. I didn't have really anyone uh, to, you know, talk to, to, you know, share the, uh, the, the things that were going on. And, uh, and it was, you know, Dhamma was it. That, that was the only refuge. And the thing is that uh, it was uh, not just the only refuge, but it was the, um, the best refuge you could possibly have. Um, because in the midst of everything, there was still happiness and still a feeling of um, you know, that I would be okay. And that, you know, e even uh, being alone in the world um, with, you know, really no other um, people around me, uh, that the Dhamma would, would be everything. And uh, so I... I've been practicing uh, the eight precepts um, as the best that I can, um, and and I th I feel that you know I I I'm going to be okay no matter what happens to my son and husband. So anyway, thank you, Prada. You're welcome, and I hope both of them will recover fully eventually. Okay, just stay with the Dhamma. The Dhamma will protect you. This yes. is the real refuge. Nothing else can protect us except yeah. the Dhamma. Yes. Okay, nice to hear from you. Thank hope, you. Hope you stay well, stay calm. Yes. Thank All you right. so much. Okay. Okay, All right. Next, Hi. Chong Lim from Pennsylvania. Yes, good evening, Tanajan. Um, actually, I'm currently in Asia. I think oh, the last I time I was calling in, I was in Singapore. I now see. I'm in Malaysia for work. Um, and because
because of my work schedule, unfortunately, I haven't been able to um, sit for extended period. But then what I try to do is throughout the day in whatever activities I'm involved in meetings, whatever, I try to be more mindful. So I guess, you know, I just want to share that with you. Uh, no specific questions. So yeah. just listening in today. Thank you. Okay. Just, just try to take control of your thoughts and your defilement and everything will be fine. Okay. Thank you. Right. Forest Tom, you've been away for a while. Where are you now? In California still? Or are you back in Massachusetts? Hi, John. <clears throat> um, well, right now I'm in New Hampshire on vacation with my family. Um, but I've been spending, I've been living at Temple Forest Monastery in New Hampshire. And um, after this vacation, I'm gonna be going back there to live for a year as a Pakao, so. In New Hampshire, there's a forest monastery there. Yeah. With tradition. Ajahn Chah branch. Ajahn Chah tradition, okay. Yeah. Good. How many, how many monks living there? Um, I think it's eight monks, and there's about to be two samaneras. I see, that's a good, good sized community. Yeah, not too big yet, although it is still sometimes on weekends, there's a lot of people. So it's, it's only an hour and a half from Boston and some other cities. That's good. Good that you find a place to go to. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy practicing there. And I can feel it's really good for um, progressing in the Dhamma. But it's good to have a community to support each other. You know? When you're alone, sometimes you, you, you don't know who to turn to when you're lost. Yeah. Yeah, and it's much, much easier to keep the eight precepts with other people who are also keeping the eight precepts. Okay, you have any questions tonight? Um, well, mostly I, I feel like your instructions have been very clear of developing mindfulness when I'm by myself in the afternoons, like doing sitting, walking, meditation, mm -hmm. chanting, but the main challenge is in the mornings, usually there's a lot of chores with other people, like for example, cooking for a few hours. And at the beginning I was trying not to talk to anyone else, but then I felt like I should kind of be a little more friendly and have some metta towards other people. Um, so I'm trying to figure out how to do that, but not to, but still it's hard to develop mindfulness when around other people. Just don't talk, just say hello and that's it. And then concentrate on what you do. And don't oh, reply okay. when you, you, they ask you something. But don't okay. go into a chat, you know, don't, don't chat. Because you will end up as idle chat. Mm. and can okay. cause your mind to become agitated and restless. Okay. So just yeah. when you meet people, just say hi, or you say hello, and that's it, and, and concentrate on what you do. Okay. People should, know, people should understand if, they, if they're practicing. No that's one true. Be, no one should be, should be talking to each other unless absolutely necessary. Yeah. You must have heard in the story that in, in the Buddha's time, there was a monastery where all the monks don't talk to each other when they come out to do their chores. And the lay people thought they were mad at each other or something. Oh. So they inquired and they said, no, this is the way they practice. They try mm -hmm. to reduce the amount of thinking as much as possible. <clears throat> because when you talk, you have to think. And mm -hmm. this will contradict your, your goal of calming your mind, stealing your mind. Mm -hmm. So you have to always look at your goal. You're going to steal the mind to stop thinking. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So you shouldn't, you shouldn't worry if people criticize you for not being friendly or what. Because this is not a time to be friendly. I mean, you can be friendly without showing it, without talking, you know. Okay. You not realize. Okay. Yeah, that's that's very helpful advice. I'll try to <clears throat> put that into practice. You see, I'm friendly, but I'm practicing mindfulness. 
So I cannot talk to you. Yeah. Mm. I mean, you don't have to tell them that. You just tell yourself this. Yeah, yeah. And if they don't understand, and they don't want to think otherwise, it's the, that's the problem. Because everybody were there just to steal the mind, to stop the mind from thinking. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that make that makes sense. So most of the time, um, following your advice, I'm trying to just develop more mindfulness. But occasionally, I do a little bit of body contemplation, asuba. So one thing that I was um, kind of asking myself is like, how how does the body um, keep going? And I guess it's by the food in the stomach that gets absorbed and used by the body. Is that a good way to contemplate, to think of the food in the stomach that yes. is They're like getting fuel. into the body? Yes, like fuel for your automobile. Yeah? Your automobile can function when you put in the gas, right? When you run out of gas, then it stops functioning. Same way with the body. The body needs the refill of the four elements. You're breathing in all the time, taking in the, the wind element. You drink water to take in the, the water element. You eat food which contains the, the earth element. Food comes from the earth, vegetables, animals, eat vegetable, and then the vegetable turn into animal, turn into meat. Uh -huh. are, what you actually do every day is refilling the four elements to keep your body going. If you start refilling the four elements, the body starts functioning. As, you, as soon as you start breathing, it starts functioning right away. It runs out the wind element. Mm. So actually the body is just a, is a, a living organism. Um, that is made up from the four elements and maintained by the four elements. Mm -hmm. And when the body starts functioning, then these four elements will then separate from each other and the body will disappear. Mm -hmm. This is how you should look at the body in terms of being elements, in terms of being no self in this body. It's a work of nature. So is it important to understand how the body is using those elements? Like what is happening to those elements inside the body or that doesn't matter? Just the big picture. Yeah. Just the big picture. The four element goes in there to maintain the 32 parts to keep your hair growing, to keep your nails growing and so forth. To mm. maintain your, your bodily function, your heart, your lungs and everything. And in the maintenance of the four elements. And one day, one day, it will stop. When it stops, then the four elements that form the 32 parts will then disintegrate into the four elements. Okay. And um, what causes it to stop when it stops functioning? That's the law of nature. That's just the law of nature. Okay. Anita. Yeah. Everything in this world. It's under the law of nature. It means change. Everything changes slowly or quickly, but everything doesn't remain the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, so, Anna John. And you're not the body. You're the one who who studied the nature of the body. The one who studied the nature of the body is another element called the knowing element of the mind, which just happened to come into connected with the body, to use the body as a tool or as a vehicle to take the mind wherever it wants on this earth, to do things that the mind wants to do, uh -huh. or the defilement that is contained in the mind wants to do, wants to have happiness from the sensual objects. 
So you go after central objects. You see things, you drink, and you smell, you, you touch, you hear things to make you happy. Without this thing, your mind feels terrible, right? When you are locked in, when you're under lockdown, you feel terrible. <laughs> That's right. You cannot go after the sensual objects that you know that you know you normally did. Uh-huh. But if you meditate, then you don't need the sensual objects. You can be calm, peaceful, and happy without having to go after the sensual objects. Then you don't need the body. And whatever happens to the body is will not then affect yourself, your mind, because you no longer need it. It can stay, it can disappear, it doesn't matter. If you have meditation here, if you have happiness from meditation, then you don't need the happiness from the sensual objects, which you need to have by, by way of the body. Yeah. So you don't need the body. You don't, so whatever happens to the body will not bother you. This is a, a result if you master yourself in meditation, by which you can always be happy with your meditation. Then you don't need the body. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that's a very inspiring goal to aim for. The body is not you. The body is just your servant. You are the mind, the master. The mind is the master. The one who knows, the one who thinks. The one who gives command to the body to say things and to do things. Without the mind, the body will just lay like a corpse. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is Sorry you, should for always, the... you should always maintain this understanding that the body and the mind are two separate entities. Mm. Okay. The mind is permanent. When the body will have to return to the return back to the four element. The mind is the knowing element, so it doesn't it doesn't break down like the body because it's one solid element. Uh-huh. Why the body is made up of the four elements. So whatever form will have to disintegrate sooner or later. If you look at everything that's being formed, they will soon not fall apart, right? Your house, your car, the trees, they all will have to fall apart. If they are formed, form, maybe they're combined with, by, with something. And that's something on the four elements. Yeah. Right. So the body is combined, but the mind is not combined. Right. The mind, the mind is one whole thing. The knowing element. So it doesn't break down, it doesn't fall apart. Because you cannot fall apart when you're just single, right? You're solid one. Yeah. And if you're made up of different parts, then these different parts will then fall apart. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This, this will stop you from worrying about your body too much. To know that the body doesn't belong to you, and that you're not the body. And that the body will eventually has to fall apart. Mm-hmm. You then move on to the next body, that's all. If you still need the body to support you, then you take rebirth. If you don't need the body to support you, then you don't take rebirth. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Thanks. Tana John. Gavin, now in Bangkok, right? How's your new home that your mother built for you? Good? You like it? Quite good. I have a lot of space to practice upstairs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, anything to contribute okay. tonight? I'm sorry? Do you want to say anything tonight? Um, I was going to ask about 
how to be able to let go of all our money as a lay person. But I think um, you have to rely on money and just don't be greedy or be attached to them. If you should lose them, then just be thankful because then if, when you become homeless, then you can become a monk. Okay. So if you can keep it, protect it, do it, but not to the point where it becomes stressful to you. Just say everything is a nidja, including the money that you that you use, that you depend on. But if you should lose them all, then at least there's another place to go, right? The, the monastery, the temples, where you don't need to spend money. Yes. This is this is one thing good about Thailand. You know, can always find a place when you don't have a place to go. Okay, John. Thank people, you. People, people didn't know that in Thailand. People didn't think that, that you know, this is the, the, the last resort for them. Because they don't like the temples, the rules. They don't like to live under rules. They don't like to keep their precepts. They don't like to keep the the rules, the 227 precepts that kept by the monk. They find it too restraining from the monk. <laughs> so rather, they run the staff and be free to do whatever they want to do. But what can they do if they're starving, right? <laughs> That's true. <clears throat> But if you want to, if you accept the rules and keep the rules, then you won't be starving. You know, you'll be fully supported. Okay. Okay. So don't worry too much about money. Yeah. We got your dad. He doesn't have any money now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Chan. Just a matter of. Training your mind to accept the rules, you know, training your mind to accept the rules. Once you can do that, then uh, living a monastery is no problem. You know. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Andalyn and your son, what's his name? Brandon. Okay. Good evening, Tanajan. Good evening, Tanajan. What's your name? Brandon. Brandon, Brandon, where's your daddy? Philip. <laughs> Where is working, it? working. Yeah, the daddy is in Singapore this week. So, uh, mm -hmm. but he said he would listen if he got time. I see. On okay. business trip this week. So, we're just listening. All right. Good to see you both. Thank you. Next to Beka, Alfredo from Brazil. Hi, Bante. Hello, greetings to you. Greetings. <laughs> always smiling, always, always laughing. <laughs> more, no, more, more. No, no worries on, on your mind, right? <laughs> what is that to worry? <laughs> my my cheetah is okay, but <laughs> the devil's because, because you have obey car, right? You have equanimity. Yes. yes. The Dermas in second in second plan. <laughs> Anicha. <laughs> Anicha is normal, never. Yeah, but this is the, the the life story. Our life story is like Anicha. Yes. Eight eight loca dermas. One I, I'm good, one hour I'm not good. <laughs> yeah. Rising and falling. Sometimes you yes. go up, sometimes you fall down. Yes. Oh, but uh, a question to you. You you say that the persons uh, uh, that not ha not have a body in in uh, in our life uh, not uh, uh, not uh, born was born, but uh, the 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 practicing in a lot is a is a uh, is a state have have not have body but have mind. Nebante is a, a Brahma state. 
he, he, he bought in 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 counts that not have body but have see, mind. When when your body dies, the mind exists alone in different realms of existence, as devas or as Brahma or as Buddha or as Arahant. It depends on how how you 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 took care of your mind. If you, if you, if you purify your mind of all greed, hate, and delusion, then you don't be born again. But if yes. you just, if you just steal your, steal your defilement without getting rid of them, you go to Brahma realm. But after the, the, the string of the, the, the practice weakens, then your defilement will then push your mind to come back and take rebirth again. Yes. But it's an elevated state, né? but it's a high state. Né? You not, yes, if, you if not you meditate, know in your defilement. You not if, know your defilement. If if you meditate, yeah, this is the highest state of any ordinary people can attain to. Rama or you can enter to jhana. And you go to be one in the two realms of Brahma, Rupa Brahma and Arupa Brahma. How you identificate your defilement in, in the states, in that states? It's like when you meditate, your meditation will, your mindfulness will suppress your defilement temporarily because you stop thinking. When, the, when you stop thinking, then the defilement cannot function. You have to think first before you can have greed or hate. If you think of somebody you, you don't like, your, your hate can come up right away. If you think of something you like, your greed will come up right away. But you, if you don't think, then your greed and hate cannot come up. But this yeah. is temporarily because you cannot stop thinking permanently. Yes. But if you use wisdom to teach your mind, that everything that you wait for is dukkha, then you will stop having greed permanently. Yes. Yes. The the the, the uh, my perception my per, uh, perception is the the man who 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 has continued the life. He has a Brahma. He he has a a, a type of bodhisattva. He has continued. I'm, I'm not has continued, but is 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 a is is a, a wrong perception, but the not has continued. Do you know what mindfulness? Yes. You have to have continued mindfulness in order to, to be able to suppress the defilement all the time. But still, yes. the defilement does not. Disappear permanently by your by your mindfulness. Yes. Your, your defilement will disappear permanently by your wisdom, by seeing yes. that everything that you crave for or long for will cost you dukkha sooner or later. Yes, dhamma dhamma is wisdom, Bhante. <laughs> it's see, only wisdom. Anicchang dukkha anatta is wisdom. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, but good to see you. Good to talk to you. Good. My my teeth is better, but uh, <laughs> one side, one side's okay. This side's not okay, but uh, okay. but. Uh, <laughs> okay. Thanks. All right. Next, Belinda of Singapore. Alata and no questions for now. Okay. Just listening in. Thank you. Gary from Singapore as well. Uh, good evening, Tanajan. Uh, I'm just happy to be listening in. No questions. All right. Kafai from Malaysia. Uh, good day to you, Tanajan. I have no question tonight. Thank you. Kelvin Lee also from Malaysia and your daughter tonight. What's your name? Good afternoon, Tanajan. What's your name? My name is Megan, and I I am not mindful. You're not mindful. Yeah. 
you are, but not all the time. Right now, you are mindful. You can talk. It means you are mindful. But if you play, then you're not mindful. You're playful instead. No, I keep thinking about uh, nonsense and rubbish, so I think that I don't know how to stop thinking. We think of the Buddha's name. Think of Bhutto, Bhutto, Bhutto. This will stop your other thoughts. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anything from you, Alvin? No, I'm just listening. Thanks, Sam. Okay. Johanna from Indonesia. Which part of Indonesia are you from? Medan or Jakarta? I'm in Medan. Where? Medan. Ba Medan. Yeah. We have, a, we have a group of Indonesian from Medan. Mm -hmm. Even food this morning on Bintabad and also coming to the, to oh. the monastery. Two families. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also uh, have a plan to uh, visit your monastery one day and Pindabad. Yeah, there's no, no, there's no quarantine now. You can come in right away. No need to quarantine. Yeah. I guess I will soon come at them. Okay, any questions uh, tonight? Uh, tonight, I don't have any questions at them. Thank you. Okay. Sri and Czech, from the other side of the world, Canada, <laughs> Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> it's night here, it's staying over there, right? Morning yeah. for you, night for morning, you. Yeah, morning. Yeah. Early morning. It's the, the, um, the internet contact, um, connect us. It's really, truly um, pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> That we have people from all over the world. Um, I just I really love the talk you give to Forrest just now. The about the elements. The, yes. Uh, yeah. Um, the, Unfortunately, we don't think of them as elements. We think of them as people, human being, as being male, female. Mm. And that's not where all the problem starts. Mm. But if you look at all of them as being four elements, then you say, what, what's the problem? No, no problem. It's just a combination of the four elements and it's a falling apart of these four elements sooner or later. Right? Nobody um, taught, taught me this before, but... Um, it's yeah. in the Satipatthana Sutta, in the four foundation of my food. Right. But I'm, I'm too too stupid to understand the like without you breaking it up for me. I just I, I read it, but I didn't really I didn't get it like um correctly. But you 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 broke it after you explain it. It's, it's so much better. Like I can understand better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't not 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 smart enough to understand the. Sutta. <laughs> so <laughs> lucky to have Ajahn to um, break it down. And so explain. you can see the limitation of the suttas. No, I think it's my own limitation, my stupidity. Um, <laughs> not, 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 not smart to understand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but um, very, very, very lucky to have uh, Ajahn who can like um, giving so many similes and <laughs> my favorite analogy <laughs> um, and also the um, I think for me I, I listened to many Dharma talks before but I didn't really hear about the um, you explained so well about the four elements and then the mind is one the, uh, one element so it doesn't break down so I, I didn't hear that uh, anyways like not for but I um from other people, but only from Ajahn about the four elements and the mind is one element. That's why it is it doesn't break down. The the body breaks down, but the mind doesn't. I think that's um, um very important. Um, the mind doesn't get all get sick or die. But but Ajahn, the the sanya and sankara in the mind. These are just the, the ability of the mind. 
sanya, the ability to perceive, sankara, the ability to think, vedana, the ability to feel, and vinyana, the ability to <coughs> be aware of the sensual objects from the, from the body and come into contact with the sensual organs. This is what the, the, the mind used to connect with the body is, is vinyana. And, uh, you translate that consciousness or awareness. Yeah, this will connect, like plug into a wall. When you plug in for your yeah, right? electricity supply, right? Yeah. When you want to get electricity, you have to plug in the wall. You, <laughs> or else your computer won't function, right? won't work. Mm -hmm. Same way with the mind. The mind needs to plug into the five central organs. Mm -hmm in order for it to be able to perceive the sensual objects. <clears throat> and then feel which this object creating different type of feelings for the mind. You see pleasant objects, yes, you get good pleasant feeling. You see a pleasant object, you get a pleasant feeling. Like all oh, these, like the memories and the, our they, functions. They are part of the, the mind, the element, the knowing element function. So they go with the mind, wherever the mind goes. They go, okay. That's why you, you, you still retain everything that you had from your previous life. Your memory, your, your, the way you think, the way you feel, the way you react and so forth. This all goes with the mind. It's in, from the mind. The body is just a, a, a material, material thing like an automobile, you know, but the driver is different. You know, and different drivers have to drive the, drive the car differently. Right? Some driver drive safely and, and some driver drive recklessly. Same way with our mind. Mm -hmm. Some people use their body recklessly and some people use their body uh, quite uh, cautiously. Mm. <laughs> the body is just like the, 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 the automobile and the mind is like a driver. <clears throat> when, the, when the car breaks down, the driver go get a new car, but he or she still drives the same way. Right? Oh, yeah, that's true. So, so too with the, the mind, when the mind change the body, the mind still have the same, <clears throat> same attitude to everything. <clears throat> the mind, if, if, if it used to be right-handed, it will continue to be right-handed. <clears throat> if it used to like something, it will continue to like something. Mm. If it used to hate something, it will continue to hate that something. This all goes with the mind. We call karma. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good or bad karma, go with you. Or neutral karma, go with the mind. Mm -hmm. Habit, habit are karma. Your habits are considered to be karma. Good habits and bad habits. You have bad habits, you do bad karma. You have good habits, you do good karma. Oh. And you have neutral habit also. You do neutral habit. You do neutral karma. Now, if you're left handed, right handed, these are considered to be neutral karma. Doesn't create any good or bad result. Mm. What you like also, the same thing. You like red color, you like green color, you hate black color. This all goes with it. For they all contain in the mind, goes with the mind to your future life, to your new body. So it's just like a, a, a driver changing a car, you know. The, the way the driver drives still continue to be the same, right? Mm. You don't change with the car you drive, right? If you used to drive consciously, you continue to drive consciously. 
Mm. If you used to drive recklessly, you won't, won't continue to drive recklessly. Mm. Okay, mm. any question tonight? Ajahn, the reason, like, uh, we have dilute, we think, like, the, um, the function of the mind, they, they, they are anichang, right? They, they break down? That's, is that they why? They break down, they change, they change. They change. Your, your feeling keep changing. Yeah, pleasant feeling, then replaced by unpleasant feeling, then replaced by neutral feeling. Oh. Yeah. And they, they keep changing. Change. Your thought keep changing. You, okay. you, you think like this, then later you say, you change your mind, you say, I think something, I want something else. With Sankara. But the memory also changed, Ajahn? Yeah, memory. sometimes you lose your memory. <laughs> you forget. <laughs> so it doesn't store in the, like the memory, but the Buddha can recall many lifetimes. So yeah, it depends oh. on your ability to recall. Oh. Oh. Some people have a very short memory, right? Some people yeah. have longer memory. They can remember more. That's why people study, they make good grades and bad grades because of their memory. Mm. If you have bad memory, when you take an exam, you cannot answer the question because you forget the answer. Yeah. <laughs> and to have good memory or bad memory depends on your mindfulness. If you have strong mindfulness, your mindfulness will keep telling you to keep remembering the, the, the thing that you need to remember. Oh. Mm. Right. right. Remember that the body is made of the four elements. How long can you remember this? Maybe after this meeting you'll forget <laughs> and you'll come back and look at yourself as being sweet and check again. <laughs> It's very short memory as far as Dhamma is concerned. Your memory of Dhamma <laughs> teaching is very, very short. <laughs> you forget about Anijan Dukkha Anatta, even though we talk about it every week, every time. <laughs> but when you see Anija, you become sad, mm -hmm. you become disappointed, you become unhappy. Because you don't want Anija, you don't want things to change. Right? Change for the better is okay, but not change for the worse. <laughs> But things can happen both ways. They can change for the better and they also can change for the worse. Mm. So you have to teach your mind this to be ready to, to face the change of the, for the worse, which will happen sooner or later. Mm. And you keep forgetting. So when you, when you change for the worse, you become unhappy. Mm. But if you not forget and you say, I know this ahead of time. Yeah, so I'm, I'm preparing my mind for it every day. So you don't feel sad or anything. Mm. Because you know that's, that's the way it is. It's going to happen. Mm. So you have to constantly contemplate on it. On Anicca. In order not to forget. And to be able to contemplate constantly, you need mindfulness to remind you. So mindfulness is a very important tool. Mm. So mindfulness keeps us from uh, not forgetting like worldly things and also the Dhamma. Like we everything, not, everything, everything, everything. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Let's move on to other people. Yep. Mm. Just yeah. a few people are waiting. Okay. Next, Thank Mandy. You. Mandy also from Canada on the different coast. She's in the East Coast. In Ontario, yeah. Um, Karad Namasakaram Prajan. Where do you learn your time from? Ajahn, really young? Yes. Yes, sir. Um, I'm doing more meditation and looking more into the theory from Miryang's book, Prop, Prop Miryang's book. And um, things are good. <laughs> Sometimes the concepts get a little bit complicated as 
like um, learning the different jhanas and um, uh, the terms um, used to describe how we build that mind power and use it, I guess. <laughs> should worry too much about the description. You should worry more about how to get to the real thing. Yeah. Which is mindfulness. With mindfulness, it will take you to the real thing. When you get to the real thing, you'll find out that it doesn't have a name. You just have a feeling of feeling good, feeling yeah. calm and peaceful. And so it's only when we communicate, when we try to tell each other what they are, then we need to use names. To, we need label to, to put label on this thing. Yeah. But in, in real terms, in practicing, you don't really need to know all these terms. Right, okay. It's like going to a restaurant. You don't need to know the name of the food. You just tell the man that this, that, that the type of food you like to have. You don't know the name, but you, you know how it tastes like, how it looks like. That's <laughs> all so, you know, don't, don't, don't get, don't get uh, what you call, distracted by trying to learn all these things. Okay. Just try to learn one thing, mindful, how to be mindful, that's all. Yes. And everything will fall into place. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, no question. No questions today. Thank you. All right. Next, Liminto. Liminto, where are you from? Indonesia? Yes, I'm from Medan. Namaskara, Medan, Jan. You know Johanna? Yes. From yes, I I know her from her friend. I see. Her friend is my friend. Okay. Well, this I'm just beginning. I'm trying to 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 do my best to meditate well. But in the past, I have my Bante to teach me, Bante Buri Panyo. But he just teach me how to to feel in her and out of the breeze. And I'm still learning to meditate. But Ajahn, there's one question I want to ask. There's one day I, I meditate, I feel like the feeling is very comfortable, very comfortable. The feeling is, I feel the time is stopped. I don't know the clock. I didn't see the clock, but I know the time is stopped. My body is freezing. Yes, when you stop thinking, the time stops with your thoughts. Yeah? Yes, I'm, my mind at that time I'm thinking is what happened with the brief come in? And then suddenly I, I forgot and it's automatically the brief in and out. Well, I'm not, I'm, I'm not feeling it anymore. Mm. But the place is very comfortable. I'm not worried anything. I'm not even worried about the death. I'm not even worried about the sick. Mm -hmm. I have no worry of anything. No fear. No. When you reach that state, there is no fear. No fear, exactly. No fear. I'm not fear anything. Very confident. I want to come back to that place. But you don't and know how to get back, right? Yes, that's the, the, the first time and I asked. The second time I, I went to see my Bante, he's not there anymore. Then, then I'm, I'm searching Ajahn from Johanna's friend. Well, you, so just, the, you just have to do it the same way that you did the first time. How you do it? Can you remember? Yeah, the first okay. time I, I had practicing four years. So it happened is two years ago. And then nowadays, I'm, because I'm busy to work, my concentration is not really full. It's kind of hard for me to go that moment. So you have to I've, review your concentration. Try to be mindful all the time. Try to concentrate on what you do. Don't let your mind scatter, go to think about other things. Don't force it to stay with what, you're, what you are doing at the moment. 
and you'll feel your concentration there. And then when you sit and watch your breath, your mind can then become peaceful and comfortable like before. Okay. okay. At least. So you need to build up your mindfulness and your concentration. Okay, I can continue my concentration to strengthen the, the focus. Yeah, all day. All day. Oh. Not, just, not just because, not, not just during meditation. You have to do it from the time you get up to the time you go to sleep. Very well. Okay. Thank you well, very much. Maybe also from Medan, right? Maybe I didn't ask you before. Yeah, yeah, John. Can Ajahn hear me? Are you from Medan? Yeah, I'm from Medan, Ajahn. <laughs> but I know friend in Medan. Well, no friend. Because I don't know. I don't know Johanna. I don't know everything. <laughs> I I just um, come back from from Singapore. I I go to to visit Ajahn King. <laughs> I thought he's in Australia. Is he back in Singapore now? Yeah, he is come back now. He is come back now, maybe in twenty one or twenty two April. So I, I when I hear oh, he is come back. So I go to Singapore to see him in person. And what did you get out from seeing him in person? Yeah, because I never see him in person. So I go, I go to see. So you got to see him, but nothing else, right? You don't get anything else from just seeing him. Yeah, to see him, it made me happy and I feel, uh, yeah, oh, this is Atan King, okay, okay. Uh, and he he also uh, gave me permit to to stay in Vihara Palelai for five days, Atan. <laughs> so I live in, at that monastery. <laughs> I stay for five days and I see... Um, all the devotees in there are very diligently to cook a good food for the monks every day. And I help the kitchen. This is what Bale Lai in Singapore is something. Yes, yes, yes. Bale Bale Lai. Lai. Yeah, yeah, in Bale Lai. So I I think it's my turn to visit Ajahn Suchat because I have visited Ajahn King, all right. I will find the time to visit Ajahn Suchat now. Well, you visit me every week already. When we need to come visit, you won't have as much time when you come to see me because I'm pretty much busy when I'm out of my room. I got people coming to see me a lot. So you can always probably say hello. And, mm. But here you can talk to me and ask any question you like. You know. so yeah. it's, it's better to see me this way than coming to see me physically. Yeah, maybe just see Ajahn in person. Make What's the difference? What's the difference? Same person. <laughs> see, in person make me satisfied and happy. <laughs> and you see now. <laughs> so, uh, I want to ask, uh, are there any restriction or requirement regarding COVID in Thai at this time, Ajahn? Because Singapore is... I think you have to contact the consulate in mm. your country. But I think I, mm. all you need is to have two, two or three vaccination you know, booster. Yeah. And then I you booster. take an ATK or take a test before you leave. And when you come into the airport, I think they ask you to take another test. That's it. Maybe like Singapore is easy to enter now. They no quarantine. You don't have to stay in a hotel or anything like that. You can go straight to wherever you want to go. Once you pass the, the test. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Ajahn. <laughs> Ajahn, uh, if... I want to talk about my problem. La. Uh, still the same problem like with the character. And if I have have being two face in can you speak if, louder speak louder if i have a two face two face i mean the face for this person and face for this person is uh including a lying a lying activity lying mm. well when you lie you break a precept i have two face like two uh two face to this person and this person 
Is this is that act is a lying? No, no. You have to uh, when you meet different people, you have different profile, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. When you meet people in the monastery, you have one profile. When you meet people in your business, you have another profile. Yeah, so many. So this is not are... lying. This is this is okay because and you you have to adapt to the changing circumstances. Because in the front of the corruptor, I say, okay, okay. But in the front of boss, I must tell him the truth. <laughs> so, and the result, uh, and the result is, they, the boss, still give this person a chance to, to do this part. Lo. I don't know the boss is, too good or too stupid, I don't know. But yeah, this person still doesn't give up. He still wants to play and keep telling me to up the price. But I just don't really want to serve him lah, because I'm still thinking what to do. And I also I also said to the to the corruptor, I said your boss is very nice. You should not. Do, do, don't go far this activity is not good for you you know but after that yeah that is they, they business uh, I don't want to know too much uh, Ajahn. so tired because I have I have to play in two phase oh, you, you have to play different roles eh? with mm. your children you play as a mother with your boss, you play as your subordinate. You play. So yeah. it depends on who you're dealing with. The Buddha said you have to know your role when you meet people. What type of role you have to play? I have telling the boss the truth, and the rest is their business. But these people is still, hey, Evie, you must make uh, up the price. Huh? Okay. It's hard for me to do, Ajahn. Okay. So I, I don't know. Yeah. Well, you've been, you have lived so far, so, so, so you should be able to do okay. Yeah. And yeah. I also have one question again, okay. I, uh Does we give food, uh, dana food to a uh, monk, which is not vegetarian food? Nah? Is that causes the sin? Causing what? Uh, cause the sin. Sin? Uh, uh, yes. karma? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Karma. No, to give food to monks, you just have to give cook food. Yeah. And but you can give the meat, you can give them in there. The, if you don't kill yourself, if you buy the meat on the, the market, then it's okay. But if you have a chicken and you kill it, and then made, made food and you give it to the monk, then you're committing. Uh, you're breaking the precept. You're doing bad karma. But some religion, they say... Well, when we're discussing Buddhism, we're not talking about other religion. Okay. Oh, because every time I want to... In the part, uh, the food who is contain the meat, it also has the... Yeah. People who is... Another religion say me, you should not give meat to the monk. You when you, when you follow sin. Buddhism, you listen to the Buddha and his disciple. You don't listen to other people, okay? Mm. Okay, Achan. Thank you, Achan. All right. Yeah. Kyuyen Dong, are you now in Hanoi? You were here a couple of days ago. We're sitting here. Yeah, I saw you yesterday, Achan. Oh, just yesterday. Okay. Just yesterday. Yes, I'm, I'm back to Hanoi now. I see. You're visiting your family, your mother? I'm seeing my mother before I'm back to UK uh, next week. Okay. Yes. Um, just the in information for Thailand. You don't need to be vaccinated to enter Thailand. Oh, really? No. But you have to be quarantined, I think, if you don't have any vaccination, right? Before the uh, before the unvaccinated got 
only three days longer um, in quarantine, like a seven day or 10 days, seven days for vaccinated and 10 days for unvaccinated. But now um, yeah, it's the same. The no, same, you, you same can, no vaccine, you can enter and no quarantine. Yes. It's up to you, it's, you have to protect yourself now. Yeah, it's, it's up to, to each person. Okay. That's good. And I think Thailand is breathing from the lack of tourists. <laughs> yeah. And Vietnam is the same. No, no difference between, between the two. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Everybody needs to open up to get people coming in so they can yeah. spend money in their own country. In their country. You, you is also open. No, no, no requirement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good, thank you for your information. Thank you. Thank you. Anything? It's weird coming back. It's, it's a bit weird. <laughs> I, I find it weird a bit. Um, back in Vietnam. I mean, out of the what, it's, uh, it, 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 it's different. Yeah. Yeah. Temple life to... and, and, and ordinary life is different. Yeah. Temple life is lost. Uh, and all. Yeah. yeah, even without working, um, it, it's, it's still different. Mm -hmm. So you can still continue on practicing even though you're not in the monastery now? Sure. You have any questions? No, I don't have questions. Thank you. Okay. And let me go to Sivirat. Sivirat, where are you from, Bangkok? Oh, you have to unmute your microphone. Cannot hear you yet. Okay. Sawadee, Namaskar, Pahajan. I come from Bangkok, Thailand. Okay. The yeah. first. Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. I, it's a, my first time for me and my husband. He have a question to ask Ajahn Pajan. Okay. Actually, you can talk to Ajahn in Thai. I'm not quite sure. But uh, yeah. other it, people don't understand. So we are, we, are, we are international here, so we have okay. to speak English. This is our first time uh, just attending. Uh, what what is actually consciousness? Because uh, I have been listening listening to uh, many monks that try to explain, but uh, you think that uh, four elements uh, is a uh, my activity. So I want to ask, uh, what is the consciousness? Is a element of uh, of my my, or is no, the no, no my has the ability to know to think. Why the body doesn't have the ability to know or think. So the noise mean consciousness, uh, consciousness, but, knowing. Then to be able to know what you say, what you see, what you hear. This is the mind. This is the ability of the mind, not of the body. The body only receives the, the information, like the camera. The camera can take picture, but the camera doesn't know what picture it is taking. So what the body sees, the body doesn't know what it sees. It is the mind who knows what to, what what the body is seeing. Is it is it the same as the the vinya, vinyan? Yeah, vinyana is consciousness is vinyan. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Um Actually, my uh, I'm been running around, not having time to stop working and thinking. Although I know mindfulness is important, but my wife says only place that I can stop working is in the mon monastery. But after, unfortunately, my spiritual monk has passed away uh, four years ago, so I have no place uh, to to stop uh, thinking to isolate isolation to isolate myself 
so that the reason that uh, my 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 wife asked me to attend to Pajan. Actually, I used to be attend in Pattaya three or two years ago, but there's so many and it's crowded with people, so uh, I don't have a uh, chance to ask Pajan. So this is first time for me that that asking uh, Tama from you. Thanks. Okay. If you want to ask in Thai, you can join us tomorrow night at the same time. Tomorrow uh, night will be in, in Thai. I have read that in, in I mean, because it's my first time, I'm not quite sure uh, when talking in Thai, so many people that uh, Satta in, in, in Prajan, so that's why my, my, my wife said, oh, maybe in English version, it's better for you to, to attend. Okay. I have to speak to you in, in English. Okay. So is, is that all you have to say? Okay. Yeah, actually she want me to ask you, is it possible that I can uh, isolate it in your, your temple or your monastery? Yes, the temple allows people to come and stay for one week. But you have to make some booking because you have to make reservation. You have to go to the 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 the, the, the temple website and give them the phone number, and then call them and ask that you would like to come and stay. They yeah, have a for me. They have a, a a house and you can stay alone. While for women there, there since there are a lot of women. But they have dormitory for women to stay. And you can you come in and when you stay in the monastery, you have to keep the eight precepts. You have to get up at four o'clock in the morning to attend morning meditation and chanting. And then in the evening, the same way at six o'clock, you have to attend evening and meditation, evening chanting and meditation. And the rest of the time, you can then be alone and do your practice privately. Okay. Yes, that's good. Is it a uh, that is uh, isolate from people, right? Yeah, but 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 not completely it's because there are other people who also come to do the same thing as you do. So you cannot be completely alone. If you want to be completely alone, you have to go wander in the forest yourself. Go camping. Camping, but, uh, <laughs> camping, but no, no prajan. No, no well, you, you don't need, you need, don't need Ajahn to go with you, see. All you need is his, his teaching, that's all that you need to take with you. It's, it's kind of spiritual uh, for mindfulness. I'm not quite sure, but, that, but uh, when I... I go to camping or I travel, but I cannot stay calm and, and, and stop working and stop thinking. So uh, usually I, I, my, my pajan is uh, Long Puli. Uh, after he passed away four years ago, um, I, 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 I am, am not have a, ที่ชื่อชื่อนุตุลีอินอุดรธานีอ่ะไรท์ไรท์ไรท์ท่านเองเอ็กแซคทลีเอ็กแซคทลียูแคนสติลโกทูฮิสเทมเปิลฮิ
um, when we come, I come to the practice, uh, when I when I stay on to mindful about the craving, clinging, all this, uh, um, anicca and dukkha, when I aware of it, uh, is it this is a uh, the most important key for me to do the practice when this are uh, no, being... no. The, to to be mindful is your is your is the the most important thing to be mindful of what you are doing and what you are thinking. Mm-hmm. You want to stop thinking, just. Just, just know what you do, but don't think about what, about other things. You want to stop thinking as much as possible. Say only what is essential. What non-essential thinking you should stop. Okay, that is the interruption. Just that, focus. That's the way to make your, you, you enter into samadhi when you meditate. See? Mm-hmm. If you don't stop thinking, you cannot enter into samadhi. Yes, yes. But, uh, yeah, Tajan, when there's one point that actually when I went to, uh, you know, check, uh, check into monastery for a 10-day course every time, yeah, they, when they come to this uh, uh, a point that where I really being so calm until I really, really, like it's going like enter into... Uh, you know, the cross over to to there to the samadhi, but then uh, yeah, the the it is it could be some something disturbed then or something that uh, that I I feel something that is interrupted and I I was shaking. Then this thing very quickly. Then I not able to get back to the close to there anymore. So well, you have to you have to restart your mindfulness again. Restart again. Yeah. Slowly build up. Yeah, because what you have again is is still very small, very little. So you have to do more mindfulness and meditate more. Before there is can, a great yeah. effort to go about for this. Yeah, you need to keep on practicing. Okay. Okay, that, uh, yeah. Okay, put more time to the practicing. Yes, and the result will come gradually more and more. But not suddenly that you can get the result all of them at one time and forever. You cannot do that. You just get it briefly and you lose it. Then you have to restart your meditation again to go back to that point again. Mm, Okay. So you just have to keep looking at it. Keep working on mindfulness and meditation. The more you do, the more you get. The less you do, the less you get. Yeah, but uh, I, I... I start every morning now, uh, every morning that I will get back to the practice again uh, by observing my, uh, yeah, I will, I will start with Anapana anyway. Then uh, start to observing little by little. So, okay. Yeah, try to get there again. Yeah, just try to do as, as much as possible. The more you do, the more you will get your result. The less you do, the less result you will get. Mm, I got the point, yeah, because I got, I can, uh, now I can, um, uh, yeah, feel about it too. Yeah. If you go to a retreat, you get more because you spend all your day practicing. Yes, yes. If you're not in a retreat, then you don't practice as much. But there's so you don't a, get that's right. I, I actually I was looking for the retreat in around here, but the, no, there's no center that having the course now, unlike the Vipassana Koinga. So the Koinga one also quite full anyway for now. Or well, un, unless they travel out from Malaysia, there is the there are many out uh, courses out there. 
no, in Malaysia now, they don't have retreat for uh, available here. You can make you can make yourself your own retreat. You know already what to do, right? All you need to do is find a place that you can do your your retreat. So you don't need to have other people to do retreat with you. Oh, just a self retreat, like that's uh, right. You just uh, go to a, a very quiet place, yeah, place. yeah, and keep the but, interest. Yeah. Put out from the house, uh, I would think so, for to another uh, quiet place. If you live alone in the house, then you can use your house as a place of retreat or something. But if you live with other people, then that's not possible. Yeah. Okay, I got it. Right. Okay. okay. Thank you, Taja. Next, Natita. Natita. Where are you from? I'm doing your microphone. Yes, uh, push the button. Okay. 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 I I practicing of the meditation. I feel this something in the in the bed. In the bed, this is around my uh, stomach. Uh, yes, it's move, move, move from the uh, this uh, stomach in the left, move in near the middle. But that's a matter, let it move, just 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 focus on, on knowing it. That's all, leave it alone. You don't have to do anything, just watch. Just watch your, your stomach, your abdomen. See it, see it expanding and see it collapsing. Okay. Okay. All right. Next, Sammy. Are you still in, in Tibet or India? In India, I think. No? Tamsana. Yeah. Yes, Tanajan, but uh, right now I'm on the way to the meditation center in uh, another state. Uh, so I'm actually right now in Delhi. I'm staying okay. in a hotel for one night and uh, I have to catch the morning train to uh, uh, nearby Mumbai. There's one Cuenca center there. Okay. I'm going for a 20 day uh, meditation retreat. Um, and uh, I have a question actually regarding uh, this uh, thing that I'm doing right now. I'm uh, registered for co for courses, Buddhist philosophy courses in the, uh, the Tibetan library in Dharamsala. Uh, and uh, as part of this, we have to sign every time uh, we uh, attend a class, we have to sign. Otherwise, if we don't reach 80% of the classes, then our student visa will be revoked. So in order for uh, coming to the meditation center for 20 days, actually the course is 20 days, but traveling three days uh, going there, three days going back, it's like almost one month. So I had to sign for the whole month. So that you study, that, that you actually study and when, when you are not. Yeah, exactly. Then you're not telling the truth. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I'm worried about. But does the fact that I'm doing it for practicing the Dharma make up a little bit for it? Or is it just as bad as, you know, signing? Yeah. And, uh, like some people do it, so they sign and go for tourism and the sightseeing, you know? Well, what you do, what is wrong is wrong. And what you do with your meditation, this is good for you. So you, on one hand, you're doing the bad thing. On the other hand, you're doing good thing. But that, what they don't cancel each other out, both have their own consequences. Okay. So it's better not to do it? Yeah, oh. like the, the Buddha say, avoid doing any bad karma. <laughs> The only good come. 
purify the mind. Because then if you do one thing, bad karma to allow you to do good karma, then you 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 are causing problem for yourself later on. From your bad karma. But you also get good karma from your practice. You could re- you get good result from your practice also. Exactly. It's quite the quite the dilemma. Well, the dilemma is that you should always follow the rules. Yeah. That's the best way. Then there will be no dilemma. It's it's when your cravings start to come in, to interfere with your your truthfulness. That's right. If you have no craving, then you can continue on studying. Yeah, craving for peace. Craving for peace will not bring peace. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it's better it's better not to uh, do it next time, and that's the thing that <laughs> at because least during the Buddha's time they didn't have to worry about visa, <laughs> but we have to do we have to worry about it. Yeah. Okay, is that all? Yeah, that's all, Tanajan. Thank okay. you. Okay. Next, Namo. Namaskar, Tanajan. So today I have a story to come and uh, ask um, some opinion from you. So I, I think I can't wait until tomorrow because uh, it's, uh, you know, I think it could really help me to, uh, since tonight and I could um, work on it um, from now on. So Tanajan, I have um, two um, problems, and I uh, I think my tooth hurts um, for like three days already. So the first day that um this happened, um, it happened on um, Sunday evening, but luckily I uh, I got to listen to the Doctor V video, the live stream, and. I think it helped me a lot because uh, I remember Tanajan saying um, like uh, something about it's um, don't really care about the body like uh, like it's um, how do I say it like uh, yeah the mind is important and um, the pain from I mean like yeah something like that I, I don't know how to explain but uh, but um, the, your teachings like helped me a lot on Sunday evening, uh, and then uh, on Monday, um, I I was so conscious and uh, uh, and like kind of scared with the pain I have. So after that, um, I think I failed the mindfulness test, and then um, today. I um I can't um uh, I can't like handle it anymore. So I asked my parents to bring me to the dentist. And uh, when my parents bring me to the dentist, right, um, five minutes before they um the um my dentist called me into the uh room, uh, I just thought of uh, your teachings of like care about the mind, like. Um, your body suffers already. Don't let the mind suffer too. So I tried to puto and it helped me a lot, like 10 minutes before. And uh, it was really surprising because when I, um, the doctor, uh, my dentist um, checked my teeth and he said that it's because I have braces in my mouth. So um, it's normal to like hurt a little bit. It's not about like, to decay that I'm worried about so I was like oh my god my mind was like <sighs> my mind is so off of put to I chant yeah <clears throat> yeah you have, your mind is dis- deceiving you because you don't have mindfulness to stop it if you have buto, buto, then it cannot deceive you 
I just realized to put till like 10 minutes before <laughs> meeting the dentist. And all the time you forget about your toe. You, yeah. worry about, you just keep worrying I, about your tooth. I worried about my tooth because I'm worried because um if I have uh if I have tooth decay, right? Tanajan, it's uh I think it's a serious problem because I have my braces on and you know uh if I need to take it off then um it would be more like uh it would take more time to you know put my teeth in places that it should be. <laughs> Hanajan, but but on Sunday, um, you forget about Anicha, you forget about Anicha. The body is Anicha, the body, body is temporary. Soon there you later you lose the whole body anyway. Yes, Hanajan. So what's the, that, what, what's the you know, what's so bad about losing one tooth? Eventually you're gonna lose the whole whole body anyway. Yes, Hanajan. Yeah, luckily, at least like 10 minutes before meeting the dentist. And uh, at that time, uh, when the dentist was checking my tooth, uh, I tried to have mindfulness of my position of body. And after uh, I realized my mind that when the doctor said that, um, no, there's nothing, there's no tooth decay. I was like, my mind was so like... It pops like, oh my God, so big, Tanajan. And I'm so happy. Like, oh my God. It's like, I can I don't know how to describe it, but it's so happy, Tanajan. You feel relieved that nothing wrong with your body. Yeah, like when um, you, you when um, you forget to think that it can happen again next time, sooner or later. Yeah, all the anxiety was gone. Like Tanajan, I'm so happy. And I was like, oh my God, my mind. It's so off with Pluto, like it's so off, Tanajan. And I, I tried to come back to Pluto after coming from the dentist, and I think I need to improve on my mindfulness from now on because, uh, because uh, when I meditate, like um, my Pluto stays in place, but when I'm not meditating, it's not staying with my breath. It's going where else it's going with the uh, um different thoughts and feelings i had at that moment tanajan okay yes tanajan so the lesson here is to to be more mindful don't forget <laughs> yes tanajan I need to, to keep calm calm your mind yes, protect tanajan. your mind before you protect the body Yes, Tanajan. And for some reason, after the doctor said that there's no tooth decay, right? I feel like my pain is gone. <laughs> it's all because of the mind, Tanajan. Yeah, the mind created the stress. So it makes the, the, the pain so more, so unbearable. But in fact, it was the stress that is, that's the problem. Yeah. If, you, if you can calm your mind, then the, the pain from the tooth is very small compared to the stress created by the anxiety of the mind. And also Tanajan today, like in the morning, uh, like and in different classes today when I went to school, right? I can't really concentrate that well uh, when compared to other days because of my anxiety and my um, me and how uh, I feel about my tooth pain. And uh, yeah, and that's really bad. And I think also because of my stress and um, not having mindfulness with Pluto, I think uh, I am more short-tempered um, than having Pluto, Tanajan. It means that your mindfulness is still very weak, so you should not, you should not uh, lose your time. Try it. You should spend more time developing mindfulness so it can become strong. So when you run into stressful situation you you can still remain calm yes tanajan it's um my mindfulness is fine when i'm meditating but when not meditating i can't control it that well tanajan so you have to do more yes tanajan i need to practice okay okay thank you tanajan All see right. you tomorrow okay see you son your body your body where are you from, sir? Hello, I am uh, from Italy. Italy, where in Italy? Yeah. Roman? 
No, I am in uh, Brescia, not far from uh, Milan. Milano, okay. Yes, yeah, not far away. <laughs> I, I wish to ask you, Tanajan, uh, Buddha often said that we have to practice in meditation in Jhana. We have to practice Brahma Viharas, so Metta, Karuna, Murita, and Upekka. Uh, and he explains to experience them uh, while expanding them, expanding above, expanding right, left, in front, back, under us, then to expand it like a bubble that expands more and more and slowly takes the whole universe inside. Is that the right practice? Can you repeat again what you said? Yes, that the Buddha said that we have to experience Brahma Viharas in Jhana. Yes. And, uh, and the, to experience them is not to, like with Metta, to share it or to include everyone with it. It is more uh -huh. a question of expanding each of it. So Metta, Karun, and so on. That is to say, Buddha said, you have to expand it above, under, right, left, front, back. Then you have to make like a bubble around you. And this bubble must expand more and more, including your village, your country, the world, and the whole universe. It means that you should be, you should be friendly to everybody. But first you can start from a, from, from a very small group first, like your family, your friends people that you, you, you meet every day, and then you expand to people that you don't, you don't meet every day, and you try to expand to the whole world, that's what I mean. You should be friendly to, to what every human being, every living being. Yes, but you can, you. you can start with, with people that you, that you meet every day first, like the people in your family. Then yes. you, when you go outside and you meet other people, then you also do the same thing like you did to your family. Yes, I'm done. That's what it means. Okay. So I do this. Yeah, yes. Usually, the Buddha wants us to be friendly to everybody, to treat everybody as our friend. That's what he means. <sighs> even, uh, even, even if they hurt you, you should not consider them to be your enemy. Yes. You should forgive them, then you can be, then you can become friends again. Right, Amazon. Okay. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And Tanajan. the best way to, to practice the Brahma Vihara is to meditate. Yes. When you meditate and you can enter into jhana, you get Ubeka. Once you have Ubeka, then it's easy for you to be friendly, to, to, to have Meta Garuna and Udita without having to force it. It becomes natural if you have Ubeka, because Ubeka gives you happiness and contentment. So when you're happy and content, you can be friendly to everybody. Right, thank but you very if, much. If, you, if you're not happy, you're not content, it's hard for you to be friendly to people, right? Yes, that's true. <laughs> so the, the right way is to, to practice meditation, to get to Ubeka first. Okay, thank you very Once much. Once you have a then Mita, Karuna, Munita is easy to do. Automatic, they come automatically with a Thank you very much, Rodan. All right, you're welcome. Next, Sajaoka, Silver Spring, Maryland. Uh, thank you, Dhanajan, for your teaching. Um, I, I kind of relate to, um, to Martha Christie's. Um, uh, the issues that she raised previously, and I wouldn't repeat, but I kind of uh, ditto her sentiments uh, uh, towards you uh, for being our teacher, and I won't repeat the accolades and stuff. And but um, but I think I can kind of relate to that what she was narrating to uh, to 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 us that that the family members and the people passing away in the immediate family, and I have had situations like that in the in the very recent months, and 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 actually just detoing her sentiments and. It affected me in a completely different way, and and not in a very traditional way. I didn't even know how to react to those things, how how to tell the other people that how I feel about that. And there was like a very interesting thing that I don't think would have happened without without Tama and you and you, and your teaching, um, uh, uh, Tana John, because because that that indeed takes us to a, a different level. So because when you are seeing 
or trying to see anicca dukkha anatta and stuff and 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 looking at these things then when i'm thinking that i too am going to be in the same place i too am going to die aging sickness is that is does not escape anybody and so so actually you are lot at loss of words because the traditional way of expressing sorrow for somebody somehow um i don't know how to articulate these things that that without coming out as as somebody who's heartless or something right so so that that is kind of in a very uh puts a smile inside my head that hey i don't think this would have happened previously okay uh so that's actually kind of uh, that what what came to my mind from 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 Martha Christie's uh, uh, points that she raised now what i originally thought about asking you is again uh you've touched on this many times that how do you briefly that connect the noble eightfold path teaching to the to the practice what are the top things that kind of jumps out of those things that we relate to to the, to the practice of meditation and of course you i recall that you you ask us not to fret over these details from sutta or not but focus on the 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 meditation object and 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 mindfulness but in any case if you have some things uh, 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 briefly to address these things i think uh, that would be useful for me thank you so in order to to be able to to advance on your path you need the driving factor of the path which is mindfulness and samadhi if you have mindfulness and samadhi then you will be able to push the other factor ahead right right thought right view right action right speech right livelihood so we concentrate more on just this two the driving force which is right mindfulness and right concentration because you need to build this up yourself without this you will not be able to to advance on the path even though you might be able to understand all the it 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 factors on the path but you don't just don't know how to get them moving going forward see? and the way to work, keep it forward is to to develop mindfulness and samadhi it's like driving a car to to get the car started you need to have the key right If you don't have the key you know even though you know how to drive the car the car won't get started <laughs> so you have to find the key to start the car start the engine same way with the path to get the path moving you need to have mindfulness to push it ahead when, when you have mindfulness then you get right concentration right with my concentration you can write the and write up right action right speech right livelihood right effort they all come from mindfulness the main driving force of the path that's why the buddha say mindfulness is the most important dharma factor more important than all the other factors so that's why we spend so much time talking about mindfulness So it's like telling you before you can drive the car, you go look for your key first, key to the key to your car first. If you can't find the key to the car, then forget about driving that car, right? So just just do mindfulness, and then the mindfulness will push you to right concentration, push you to right view and right thought, right action, everything driven by your mindfulness. Okay. Thank you, Tanaka. That's all. Thank you. If you get mindfulness, you get the 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 the, the rest of the info path. If you don't get mindfulness, you don't get anything. I understand. You might, you might have the you might have the memory of the yeah of the the path, but you don't get the the path itself. Just you just get the name of the path. Now, oh, I know what my concentration is. I know what, but I just don't know how to build it up. That's all. So stick with mindfulness. 
movement. The more you concentrate on building up mindfulness, the more you'll be advancing on your path. Okay. Thank you, Professor. All right. I think I think everybody has a chance to ask a question. Now I think it's time for people from Facebook or YouTube if they're sending any questions. There are four questions from Facebook, Tanajan. The first question from Elik. Namo Puttaya Ajan. How do I get rid of my manifested kilesa from my sankhara? Thank you. Well, you have to practice mindfulness. And then after you have mindfulness, then you can practice wisdom. This is the way to get rid of your defilement. Next question from Chong Yo. Ajahn, is the Nibbana mind just the knowing mind, not our usual mind that attached to the five aggregates? Thank you. It's the same mind that attached to the, the, the five aggregates, it's the same mind. Next question from Yapto. Namaste, Ajahn. How to deal with the emotions that arise from ourselves? Thank you. You can use mindfulness like reciting Buddha, Buddha, or do chanting. Then your emotion will eventually subside. The emotion is created by your thinking, your thoughts. And if you use Buddha, you can stop your thoughts. Then when your thoughts stop thinking, then the emotion that created by the thought will also disappear. And the last question from Himantra, Tanajan, could you please advise how to maintain Ubeka when bad things are happening around? In the past, I used to avoid reading news altogether. My meditations was going well at that time. But at the moment, there are violent fightings in our country. Because of this, I get a strong craving to read news frequently and check what is happening. This badly affects the mindfulness. Could you please kindly advise how to strengthen Ubeka in this situation? Thank you. Well, you just have to keep reciting the mantra rather than listening to the news or watching the news. Keep reciting mantra and then your mind will eventually become calm and has Ubeka. All right. One, one more question? Okay. Jan. The question from the Morning Star. I'm practicing anapanasti while doing sitting meditation. If strong pain arises, what should I do? I remember you told us to recite putto more quickly. In case if meditator is using putto technique, how about anapanasti? Or should I switch to use putto instead of anapanasti. Thank you. Thank you. If you find that you cannot concentrate on watching anapanasati, then you can switch to a mantra. You can use any type of mantra, putto or anija. Just, just keep reciting. So the mind will not be distracted and be disturbed by the painful feeling. If you don't recite a mantra, then the mind can become distracted easily and then it can then will not be able to withstand the painful feeling. So you need a mantra. Oh, you can recite the 32 parts of the body if you can. If you are a doctor and you're used to studying the, the body anatomy, you can use the reciting of the names of the, the body parts. This will keep your mind away from being distracted. Keep it concentrated, then they will be able to withstand the painful feeling. Okay. Anybody else would like to ask any question? You are free to ask by raise your hand and unmute the microphone. We have about 12 minutes left before our time is up. So feel free. Not even, you don't usually have questions, you just have comments. 
You want to comment something again? No. I want to ask King Ajahn. Okay. How to prevent the mind from thinking while meditating because of problem in life? Is there mm. any other way besides Budo? Because Budo for two hours only make my mind tired. And after Budo, my mind start to dig into the life problem again. You can, chant, only... you, can, you can chant the sutta, you, like, you can recite the sutta. The four foundation of mindfulness or the Tamma Jaka Pavatana Sutta. Or any sutta, you like. If you feel that Budo is too redundant, it's too then you can use the sutta to recite the sutta to keep your mind busy, to keep your mind concentrated and stop thinking about other things. You cannot, Ajahn, because I I chanting every day. Besides chanting, the mind still can thinking. That's because you're not, you're not honest in your chanting. You have to be honest when you chant. Stick with your thinking, stick with your chanting. Don't, don't, don't let the mind go think about other things. So I find a way, uh, the only way to silence my mind is to focus the, focus the forehead. But I just want to say it's not the Buddha teaching, so I haven't, I haven't found the right way to... I don't know, maybe your way, might be, my, your way might be the right way. If you can control your son by focusing on your forehead, then who's who to stop you from doing? Yeah, use forehead, it can like catch the monkey. So the monkey cannot go out. Okay, each one, each, each person have the, the unique way of stopping their thoughts, okay? If, mm. if this is your way, then you go ahead and do it. The goal so is I to stop do. thinking, to control your thoughts. Yeah. Stop thinking. And I feel when we don't have problem, it's easier to meditate and easier to enter the calmness. Because when you have problem, you have to think a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, okay. I I I I I will try use the forehead. Okay, okay. I can dance. <laughs> okay, we have Sulan. Sulan just came in, huh? Sulan, do you have any question? Yeah, I can. Oh, Namo Buddhaya, I hope you are well. I have uh, two questions to ask. Can you speak a bit louder? Oh, uh, yeah, Namo Buddhaya, Ajahn. Uh, I have uh, two questions to ask. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, the first question is, um, yeah, so for example, if let's say, uh, like, uh, people say something, then after that, um, like, one young kind of person, they will be able to understand the intent or agenda of the what the other person is saying. Then another type of person is uh, they cannot understand what is the intent, what is the agenda of what uh, the person speaking is saying. So like, um, how would you advise the second group of people? If you don't want to be affected by what they say, then don't, don't interpret what they say. Just listen to the, the sound, just like you, the sound of leaves, sound of wind blowing the leaves. Oh. It's, it's only when you interpret what they say that's caused you the problem. See? And you don't know how to interpret it properly. You interpret to hurt yourself, so better to start interpreting the, oh. the sound you hear. Mm. Just, as many say, this is just a sound, like the sound um, of wind, you know. Mm. But then, um, if it comes to like work or like dealing with people, then um, like um, it becomes a problem when we cannot like uh, grasp what is their intent or like what are they exactly trying to say. Ask them for clarification. Mm -hmm. Ask them to clarify. You don't understand what they say. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Because you can, mm -hmm. you can, if you interpret, you can misinterpret what the intention are. So if you don't know what the intention are, ask them, what is your intention? What's wrong about that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. True. It's the, it's the underlying intention that 
that's not your problem then. They have underlying attention. If they don't review it, then it's not your problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Understand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just uh, I'm asking because uh, I seem to have uh, find it uh, difficult to kind of um, understand uh, people's agenda and the uh, intention. Yeah. Then, um, so when I approach uh, things, yeah, I'm not very skillful. So I think it's what they call like, you know, not being street smart <laughs> enough. So this seems to be a problem. Then I, I have been quite troubled over this. Yeah, so that's why I'm trying to like ask for some advice also. Well, the way I look at it, you just leave them alone. Don't worry about their intention and just watch what they actually do or say. That's all. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And, and watch your back. Make sure, <laughs> make, sure, make sure you don't get stabbed when you turn your back. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, I think I tend to take things at face value. So like um, when I watch uh, what people say or, or do, then I take it quite face value. And yeah. Yeah, just take it at face value and, and also be, be ready to, to, to see other action that might come. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Never trust anybody 100%. Trust them and also have a little bit of uh, skepticism. Oh, uh, skepticism. Okay. Because mm. if you trust somebody 100%, you, you, can, you can fall into a trap. Oh, you know? uh, yeah, if, that's true. If you just trust them 50-50, then that's okay. Trust them 50 and not mistrust them another 50. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, so you, you can be prepared if you know what what your trust might not be. Your your trust might be misplaced, for instance. Mm -hmm. Then you won't then you won't be surprised. Oh. Mm. Okay. I'll be hurt because you're prepared. Mm. Okay, I will um I will think about what you have shared with me <laughs> to digest of it. Yeah. Then, like, um, my second question is, uh, so for example, if let's say, like, um, because just now as I was listening to the questions, then, um, yeah, it kind of um dawned on me that. Like um, when we face death, um, like uh, when the person actually departs, we won't be able to talk to them, and like um, so it's kind of similar to when uh the Buddha passed away. It says that if we see the Dharma, we can see him, but in a way, we won't be able to talk to him. Then like, don't know why the, like we'll feel quite down. Is it because like we see the body as the Buddha or like we think that the body is that person? So we That's shouldn't right. That's think right. that way. So you should, you should think of the body as just a, a medium that connect mm. you to the person. The mm. person is the mind, see? the one who thinks and the one who knows. This one doesn't die. But the, without the medium, then you cannot communicate or connect with that, that mind, mm. unless you have special gifts, mm. psychic mm. power. Then mm. you don't need the body to communicate with another mind. 
like the Buddha when he gave Dhamma talk to the, the, the devas, the spiritual beings. They don't have any body as a medium, but the Buddha can connect with them directly through his psychic power. Mm. But what do you want to connect anyway? Yeah? The more people you connect with, the more problem you have. The less you connect, the less problem you have. <laughs> oh, but the, wouldn't... The, the best thing is to be able to, to live alone and not be connected with anybody. Mm -hmm. And no problem at all, zero problem. Zero problem. You only get problem because you connect to people. Because when you connect, you start to have an attachment to them. Mm -hmm. If you don't connect, then there, there's no, no attachment. Okay. But the problem is you cannot live alone. So, so you have to connect to other people with other people. But if you learn to meditate, one day you'll be able to live alone without having to to be uh, connected with anybody. Mm. Mm. It's your defilement that makes you need to connect with people. Oh. Your desire, your craving, your greed. Mm. But by connecting, you also get the negative side of the connection. Mm. Because everybody that you connect mm. with not, isn't perfect. Yeah. They have good and bad side. When you connect, you connect with the good side, but then the good side can turn around and the bad side can come up. Then you don't want to connect with them, right? Until you want to run away. Mm. But when you run away, when you're alone, you become sad again. So you want to reconnect again. So you just, you just like a ping pong ball. Just going <laughs> back. Yeah, like a ping pong ball. But if you can meditate, you can be happy with meditation, then you don't need anybody to connect to, to make you happy. Mm. Mm. Sure. Okay, so learn how to med so practice mindfulness and meditation. Mm. Then you will not have to engage with people. If you engage, you can engage them superficially because you don't expect anything from them. You don't need anything from them. They can give you or not give you anything, doesn't matter. Mm. Mm. Then, Ajahn, like, um, when your teacher passed on, like pass on, like for yourself, do you do you feel? Well, you 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 need a teacher when you haven't yet finished your study. Once you finish mm -hmm. your study, then you don't need your teacher. Oh, um, so so you don't feel like the need to connect with them. It's like going to college. When you graduate, you want to go back to college and connect with your professor. <laughs> no need to, right? Because what they, what, they, what they can give you, you already got it from them. And that's nothing else you can get from them. So. Mm -hmm. Same way when you practice and you become enlightened, then once you have become enlightened, then you, you don't need to teach you to, to teach you anything anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're running out of time. It's okay. 10. Yeah. It's two hours and three minutes. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for, mm. for joining this meeting. I hope that it benefits you and help you advance in your practice. Mm. In the meantime, please stay health, stay safe, stay healthy. Stay mindful and keep on practicing. And if nothing happens, or if all goes well, I will see you again at the same time next week. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you, Ajahn. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. 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 Thank Bye. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.